I have one big question for you. Okay. What do you think is going to be the next big innovation in your industry? Don't give away any trade secrets. <laughs> well, if I have my way, that it would be, you know, a national invention contest that really puts on a pillar our youth so that we can build a mindset, a winning mindset, that um, we will dominate the innovation and invention space indefinitely. And so, you know, that's what I see in the future. It's going to take a lot of work. Um, we believe we have found certain routes uh, to make that happen because it's a slow process to get schools to adopt this process, right? They have to, there's a lot of work. You have to teach the teachers. You have to have an innovation lab installed mm -hmm. in your school. You have to have equipment. I mean, if you can imagine back in the day, look, your question, I'm going to walk you back for a minute over 100 years ago. And everybody knows what science is today, right? But at one time, chemistry, there was no chemistry class, right? There, was, there were these people over there in Europe, let's say, they were like, they looked like wizards, and they, uh, the, and you don't even have pictures of them. We have these old oil paintings of these masters who were messing around with black powder, and they didn't, they were just experimenting, right? And um, until here in Pittsburgh, actually, uh, this gentleman, his last name is Fisher, he decided he was going to take the art of what used to be called alchemy, and he was going to turn that into a system where you could do science experimentation and we're going to systemize this, right? So he created the world's first science lab and brought about tools like, uh, like a, um, a beaker from Germany, he, uh, a Bunsen burner, like all, all the common instruments that you see in a chemistry lab today. Well, 120 years ago, that wasn't around. Mm -hmm. So if you said to him, you know, what do you think, you know, the future holds? Where, in tomorrow's world, what are we going to see, Mr. Fisher? Uh, you know, he'd probably think, oh, wow, I really, I'm not really quite sure. But in reality, his work is responsible for generating tens of millions of jobs. If you think about it, there are entire industries that revolve around the field of science. And Fisher Scientific was the most basic building block of it all. Mm -hmm. So they had to teach teachers how to teach chemistry and science. And the corporations needed them because they needed to do quality control, right? So if something comes out of a factory, you got to check it, you got to put it into the lab, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. That's part of it. Then you have our pure R&D because you want to invent a new product in the lab, right? And so he basically built this infrastructure, which then led others to say, well, we're gonna, we got what? We have a pharmaceutical industry. We have a biotech industry. We have, I mean, I could go on and on about how many industries blossomed out of that. I wish I could tell you the, what our students of the future, what industries they're going to invent but with this kind of mindset of you can invent anything, you can make anything better if you're willing to think that way and work hard toward that objective, I wish I could tell you what all those kids who are going to turn into adults are going to invent, what industries they're going to create, how many new jobs are going to, are going to come about in a hundred years. My only hope is, is that, that it's, if, it can, if it can be as promising as what the, the Fishers did back then, We've done our job. Yeah. yeah. George, thank you very much. This has been really great. It's a great, it was a great opportunity to come and like turn the tables. Yeah, thank you, Greg. For more information on the innovations shaping our world, visit tomorrowsworldtoday.com, check out the Tomorrow's World Today Facebook and Instagram pages, or subscribe to our YouTube channel.